our Bible lesson for the week of May 25 through 31 is exploring three themes that really go together. We're talking about running away. We're going to talk about being content. And we're going to talk about helping and receiving help from somebody else. Did you ever run away? Did you ever want to run away? Did you run away as a kid? You may have for a little while. More often we hide rather than run away when we think life's not fair, our brother or sister's getting it better than we are, or we're being punished for something we did wrong. In the Bible, and we're going to study this in July, when God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh to give, him God's, give them God's message, he ran away. He didn't want to do that. He ran away from God and the assignment that he had. On the Andy Griffith Show on Mayberry, when Ernest T. Bass was really having a hard time, he said, I'm going to find myself a cave and hermitize myself. Well, we do that sometimes. We want to run away from responsibilities, from our family, or even from God. But when I was a kid, I always knew Mama would be waiting and Supper would be ready. And we could depend on God always being there for us. In Psalms 121.7, the writer says, The Lord will watch over your life. And we can depend on that. In Psalms 139, the psalmist says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit, you know when I rise. You know my thoughts from afar. You know my going out, my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn or if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Even the darkness will not be dark to you, for darkness is as light to you. So we can lose our way in this life, but God always knows where we are and he's looking to find us. And our church is a place where we show the love of God to each other. Contentment. That's tough. In our capitalistic, materialistic society, it's hard to be content. And I want to tell you, when I first moved to Alabama from Kentucky, after I married, I always wanted to live in Florence, Alabama. Well, it took me a long time to get here, but I'm here and I'm not going to leave. I love Florence. Deborah and I love Florence. We love our church family. It's a great town with a great downtown. We have good restaurants. We've got the river. We've got the lake. I remember when I was little in school, I was always watch National Geographic because we lived on a small farm. My dad preached. We never went anywhere and spent the night. We always had to be back home wherever we went. And I saw all these wonderful, exotic places that I wanted to travel to. And not even did I not just want to go there, I was envious of people who did get to travel, go to the beach, go to the mountains, go to the West Coast, go to California, go to New York. We may envy the travels and the things of others, but it's really good to be content. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 18 through 29, David remarking on the fact that God was going to bless him through his children. King David went in and sat before the Lord, and he said in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 18, Who am I, Lord, and what is my family that you brought me this far? And as if this were not enough in your sight, you've also spoken about the future of the house of your servant. What more can David say to you? For you know your servant, sovereign Lord, for the sake of your word and according to your will, you've done this great thing and made it known to your servant. How great you are, sovereign Lord. There's nobody like you, and there's no God but you. And he goes on down to verse 28. Sovereign Lord, you are God. Your covenant is trustworthy. You've promised these good things to your servant. Now be pleased to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever in your sight. Now David's expressing great joy and gratitude to God for God promising him that he would bless him and his family. Now, Sometimes hard gets life gets hard and heavy. We talk about running away when things get tough. We talk about being content. And those two things go hand in hand. We need to be content where we are with what we have. God blesses us. And then we won't be looking to run away. And then when we're content, then we're able to help somebody else. 
and receive help when we need help. When life gets hard and heavy, we need God's hand to lift us up and the help of others. Contentment and security make it possible for us to help other people with their baggage and in turn accept help when we're overwhelmed, but always know that God knows and God cares. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 19, Paul talks about contentment and also being able to receive help when he needs it. Paul says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that you have renewed your concern for me. I've learned to be content. What are the circumstances? I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all through him who gives me strength. And he says, you Philippians sent me aid more than once and I was in need. I've received the gifts you gave and they are a fragrant offering to me and to God. Now, Paul appreciates the help that he has received. And it is a real gift because he was content even when he needed help. So let's think about these three themes for the week. Running away. If we're content, we won't be running from God or responsibilities or running from our family and our friends. Being content makes it possible also to give help to others and to receive help when we need it. All these things go hand in hand, running away, being content, and helping others. So let's pray. God, thank you for knowing us, for wanting us as your family. Help us to be grateful. Help us to be content. Help us able to help others. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen.